Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another Faith Live session. We are super excited to be able to bring to you today another, listen, transformational, life-altering truth. I said that slow on purpose. Transformational because everybody wants the power to change their circumstance. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the power to change your circumstance. We're talking about the power to change your circumstance. That's my 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 goal today. Is that the right word? Is my goal? Or my um? No, it's not. I don't want to say goal. My objective today is to get you to realize or to become aware of the power to change your circumstance we ain't waiting on god anymore oh i love i love saying that we're not what he waiting on us to realize this power to change your circumstances your situations your marriage, your finances, your relationships, your dispositions, your fears, your whatever it is. We have a power to change it. We are change agents. We are those who are responsible for the manifestation of the, the realities of God in the heavens. We're responsible for that. We have, enough, we have a power. Paul said, this light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh in us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, the things that we can see with the natural eye, but at the things which are unseen. Why? Because the things that are seen, he says, are temporal. That means they, they don't last forever and they're subject to me changing them. Now, what we're talking about is how to change them. We have an assurance. We have an assurance. We have a most definite way guaranteed to work. Just Leslie, guaranteed to work. No doubt about it. Ain't a chance of it not happening the way it's been revealed to happen. I'm talking about assurance. Your faith life is God's guarantee to us that what he has for us will happen if we do it according to what was spoken. Man, I, I wish we was talking about Noah today, Sister Leslie, because Noah is a prime example of the assurance, the absolute assurance of what God has spoken if I move in the right way, if I have the right mindset, guarantee eliminates risk, eliminates chance, eliminate is not happening. But we ain't there yet. We won't get to that on Wednesday. Today, today we're dealing with the, uh, the an aspect of faith that like it is almost like God was talking about. He was giving you. He was giving you, he gave us the, the description of what faith becomes, the anatomy of faith, right? Then he started talking about, then, excuse me, then he started talking about Abel, then he, then he started talking about uh, Enoch. And in between Enoch and Noah, he slipped in this verse, verse 6. It's really related to Enoch's life, but he says, But without faith, it is impossible to please God. And he that cometh to God, he must believe. Two things we must believe. We must believe that he is and he's a rewarder. If you don't believe these two things, you can't walk with God. Everywhere where you see faith mentioned about a particular individual, about a particular personality, they believe these two things. You cannot walk with God unless you believe these two things. You cannot experience God. You can't, we're going to see them more. You can't come up to God's level. You can't relate to God. You must relate to God through these two truths. You, if you don't relate to God in this way, you'll misunderstand things while you read it in the scripture. That's the problem. If you, don't, if you don't see God through a particular lens, you'll misunderstand things that you read. You won't have clarity in things that we hear 
because we don't have the right spectacles, perspective of who God is. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. But today, for those who are watching me by Facebook, those who are watching me by YouTube, those who are watching me by, by uh, Zoom, welcome. 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 Because we're talking about the solution. I don't care what the situation is in your life. I don't care what the problem is in your life. I don't care what you're facing, what challenges you're facing. The solution, the solution, the solution, God's solution starts with the new man. Uh, I'm sorry, we, we don't have that slide back in. We got the new slide, but I'm so used to the new man, the new man slide being up there. It starts with the new creature. Like that's that's the foundation for all spirituality. Like, like we were talking on the other day, like all your your spirituality begins. Spirituality begins. One more time. Spirituality begins with new birth. Like it begins with new birth. If 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 you don't experience new birth, you're not spiritual. I don't care. I don't care what you say. How, how what? Like you're not spiritual. New birth. New birth. When we talk about biblical Bible spirituality, it start. It it begins with new birth. Like you can't you can't move forward with God. You can't move forward with 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 the faith life. You can't move forward in anything without new birth. Like 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 the first question that should be asked. To somebody when they come to you for for spiritual advice or advice on the faith life or how to how to communicate with God or how to hear from God or how to know the first question are you born again that, that should be the first question have you experienced new birth have you have you re been regenerated in the spirit that's the first question or really 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 I can't get into the the nuances and the details of of life after that what what i can talk to you about those how as, as the process of of experiencing new birth and how i experienced it that's that's what i testify to but i no, i can't really i can't really i can talk to you about it but it really won't do you any good because new birth triggers new man is the only man that's able to walk out this faith life to the degree god wants us to walk it out it starts with a new creature. You have, you, you, you have to start there. We waste a lot of time talking to people about spiritual things that never experienced new birth. We, we're going to see. Wait, wait till that day come. When we, folks going to be standing in line waiting to get in, and it's going to be like, nope, 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 nope. You ain't make, no, no. I mean, that's just what it is. Accept it now. Lord, I want to experience new birth. It's just that simple. And you and you and he'll, rec he'll he you receive it, right? So so it begins with the like like that's where it begins. That's the only man that's able to live out this faith life the way God intended for us to live it. The only man, the only man that can walk in the in the level of anointing, the level of grace, the level of goodness, the level of blessing, the level of mercy. The only man that can do it. The level of love, the level of faith, the level of hope, the level of righteousness, the level of peace. That's the only man that's, that's, that's fully capable of experiencing this zoe that Jesus came to die for, so, so, so that we can have. That's the only man that's able to experience that. If, if you don't understand that, you're in trouble. It's, it's, it's not, it's, you got to get that. Like that's, 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 that's first grade. That's preschool. We have to understand this. This is of utmost importance. The faith life is the only life God supplies the need for. It is the only life God is blessed. That's why Jesus died. It is the only life that's guaranteed to succeed. Paul said we have this assurance. Let me read it for you. I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to read it to you because I know. I listen. I thought the same thing when I read it. And begin to see it. You mean this thing guaranteed? Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22 says this. We're going to be all up in Hebrews today too. Look, 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 look. It says, let us... Draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. 
having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That's new birth. That's new birth. That's reference to new birth. Having your heart sprinkled from, a, from an evil conscience, that's new birth. Old man got an evil conscience. And an evil conscience is not, an evil conscience from God's from mind is not people who think about murdering, killing, uh, robbing, that's not evil. An evil conscience is a conscience that's, that's, that's rooted and buried in unbelief. The Bible says the evil heart of unbelief. It's, it's a heart that, that, that refused to believe. It's a heart that won't believe. And because you don't believe, you're still conscious of sin. This this going to sound, I don't even know if I should say this, Sister Leslie, because most folks can't handle it. They'll misunderstand what I'm saying. The new creature does not live from a sin consciousness. The old man can't help but to live from a sin consciousness. The new man is righteousness conscious. That's why I don't have to talk to new people, new creatures about sin. The best thing you can do for a new creature when they do miss it, Sister Leslie, not talk to them about it. Well, you need to go tell him he's wrong. No, I don't. If he's born again, no, I don't. I don't. He know he's wrong. She knows. I don't have to tell him that. What that means, when you, when you, when you live from a righteousness conscious perspective, even when you miss it, you ain't sitting at home worried, oh, my Lord, I don't know. God, God gonna curse me now. Now God ain't gonna, now ain't nothing gonna go right. Now ain't, that's 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 what an evil conscience. Is. An evil conscience will will accuse you, will will con, will confuse you, will cause you to feel anxiety and stress. An evil conscience will cause you to live from the space of of fear and unbelief. An evil conscience will cause you to live from the place of doubt. An evil conscience will cause you to live from a place of of condemnation and and worry. That's that's what an evil conscience does. Ah, you want to talk about? You want to talk about relief. I'll, ne the f I'll never forget the very first day I lived from this evil conscience. My, 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 my conscience convicted me and condemned me and judged me all the time prior to my salvation. I was, I was, I was, I was playing football in Miami and I was living like a, a single man with, with the means to do whatever you want to do in Miami, Florida. And I was young and didn't know no better. And, and I was doing stuff that I was, oh, why did I do that? Oh, I wish I hadn't have done it. Oh, I shouldn't have did it. Oh, I shouldn't have said it. Oh, why, do, why did I do that? Why did I do this? And why did I, why, why? and I would live from that. And then one day, one day, my teammate Irvin Fry said, man, I need y'all to come hear me preach. Message was looking for love in all the wrong places. And I was looking for love in all the wrong places, I'm telling you. And I heard that message, and I said, man, that message is for me. I need to take that tape home, Pops. He gave me the tape, I took it home. I said, Lord, what must I do to be the man you want me to be? The Spirit of God said, call Leslie, tell her you love her, tell her you're going to be with her. And I did it. And I'm telling you, when I hung up that phone, I, I felt the weight, the sin, the condemnation, the, the, the confusion, the doubt, the, the low self-esteem, the fear, the, 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 the shame. The, I, I felt it leave. I, I literally felt Felt it lifting up off my chest. I could, I could feel it, and the, this, this, this sense of liberty came to me. This sense of freedom. That's what this scripture is talking about. You've been, you've been delivered. You've been, your heart's been sprinkled from an evil conscience. There's an assurance. That's what I was getting at. There's an assurance. That word assurance. Look, 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 look. look. Most certain thing. To have full confidence in. It's a, it's the, root, the root of that word literally means to cause to happen for sure. Your faith life is the only life that God assures the outcome in. Absorb that. Think on that. Meditate on that. Your faith life is the only life that God assures the outcome. But you got you to do it by faith, which, 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 which is the covenant-keeping concept that causes the covenant promises to manifest in your life. All right, let's dive in this thing because I'm running out of time, Sister Leslie. Did I welcome everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to welcome everybody. Um, Go to, let's go to Hebrews. Go to Hebrews chapter 11. 
we left off talking about Enoch. And this is actually connected to the life of Enoch. Verse 5 says, by faith Enoch uh, was translated that he should not see death because God translated him before he had this translation. But before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now, I started talking to you about that. That word pleased there does not mean just to make somebody smile. It's, a, it's, a, it's actually a covenant term, a covenant term that, that related, that kings used when it came to how they would relate to each other. And we're going to get into that in a second. It says, verse 6 says, but let's be clear, Pastor Lund, let's be clear about this thing. Enoch pleased God. And I told you all about Enoch. You got to go back and look, and look at, the, look at the, um, the, uh, the, the YouTube for that because uh, you won't hear things about Enoch. That's, that's a blessing to your life, right? Um, and we want to we wanna extract the truth and the triumphs. This study is about the, the extracting the truth and the triumphs of the Hall, Hall of Faith members. And it's important for us to understand that, right? Apostles, let me be clear. But without faith, he couldn't have did it. He said, but without faith. Now, we know without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith. After he declared what, what Abel did, after he declared what gave us the, the anatomy of faith, then he talked about Enoch being translated with a picture and a type of what the church, the church going to be so pleasing to God that he's going he gonna to say, come on, brother, he, we out of here. He said, but let's be clear now, without faith, because there's some who might think that we have something over on this side of the cross that they didn't have on that side of the cross. You know, there's some who might think that, that they didn't live in the course of walk with God in the course of where we have to walk with God today. And that's not true. It's built upon better promises on, and, and, it's, and it's solidified by, by, better, by better blood, if I can say it like that. But, but they, we don't have nothing as far as how to, how to experience life that God wants to experience on no more than what they had. He says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Let's be clear about that. Now, let's just look at that phrase. Paul said, I mean, uh, um, yeah, Paul said, without faith, it is impossible to please God, right? He says, he says, but he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. The idea that Paul was trying to impreg impregnate the minds of the Hebrews was this. Look, faith, this thing we call faith is most important. Sister Leslie, when somebody say, you can't do something unless you do this or without doing this, you can't have this. How important is that statement? How important is that? You can't go here without doing this. How important is that? That just separates the, 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 the idea that without, like, like your faith life is the most important life when it comes to you pleasing God. The disappointing thing is going, is going to be when you live a life that's, that's not driven by faith, but it seemingly seems successful, and, you be able to, and you're going to stand before God one day, and you're going to point to all those things you did, and he's going to say, none of that stuff matters. Well, why, Lord? I, I put all my time, my energy, my life, my money, I put all that into it. He says, it wasn't by faith. I didn't, I didn't inspire you to do that. I didn't incite you to do that. I didn't encourage you to do that. I didn't give you the wisdom to do that. I didn't give you nothing. You did that on your own. See, see, because you think you can't do nothing without God. You think everything that you do, God did it. God's involved in it. No, not at all. Not at all. The, I, the idea he planted in your mind is this, this thing. Without faith, it is impossible. Let me give you an idea of what he's speaking to. Here, that word impossible speaks to this. You're without strength. You don't have the strength. You don't have the fortitude. To live this faith life. You, you know, you, it's impossible. You don't have the strength. You're impotent without faith. In other words, see, impotency, Sister Leslie, means I got, I got the tools. They just don't work. <laughs> I got the ability to do it, but the thing ain't operating right. Like, I, 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 got the, I, got the, I got it. I got that. But I can't make that thing happen. Sister Leslie. <laughs> That's what they're, that's what they're saying. I got the thing, Kayleen, but I can't, it can't, it won't, it won't do right. I need a pill. I need, I need a blue pill or something. But it, they won't, it won't come alive. No, you know how frustrating that is? 
I don't know. What color is it? I don't know. I think it's blue. Like, like, you know how frustrating that is? To have the, to have the, to have the tools, but they don't work? And you trying to make them work? You imagine the frustration of, of being able to, of, of, having, a, of having, the, having the ability to build, but you, but you don't have the power to build. Having, having the ability, in, in the case of impotence, to reproduce and, and, and enjoy the pleasures of it as well, but, 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 but you don't have the power. That's how most folks live life as believers, as Christians. You have all the power. You have all the apparatus. You got all the promises. You can declare it all the time. But you're impotent because you're not doing it by faith. Faith, without faith, you're impotent to produce the life God wants you to produce. I'm going to church. I'm, I, I'm paying my tithe. I'm, I'm talking to people. You get all of the, all of the antics. You get all of the surrounding, but, but you don't have that thing from the inside. You don't have the, the word of God impregnate you alive in your spirit to manifest. You don't have sight. You don't have mind. You don't have mouth. All of that stuff without faith. You're, you're completely powerless into the world. You're disabled. You're weak. That's what this word impossible speaks to. Without faith, I need to know my time. Without faith, without faith, you're weak, impotent, impossible, without strength. Because to move mountains is going to require you to be strong. To be strong in faith. The Bible says Abraham was strong in faith. You, can, you can't be, you got to be strong in faith. Right? And he says this. He says, his, his, he was strong. He said, he said, he looked not at his body, which was now dead, but he gave glory to God. See, see, strong faith can look at the circumstances and still praise God. Lord, I thank you for the, for the manifestation. Lord, I thank you for this happening. Lord, I thank you for sure. Lord, I thank you for showing me this. See, strong faith in the midst of the circumstance, when it's not in alignment to how God aligned, you praise God, you thank God, you glorify God because you, 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 you know it's going to happen. It's, it's, it's assured to happen. But if you ain't never heard anybody tell you that the faith life is the only life that God assures, that God guarantees, that God means it's going to happen, like, like there's no doubt about it, it's the faith life. Well, what do you mean? What, well, well, well how, how can God get it? Listen. Do you think Jesus went to the cross? What should end up praying? You think Jesus went down to hell without an assurance that his father was going to raise him up? And he did that by faith. How many of y'all think, well, look, Jesus, listen, Jesus, look, Jesus, listen, 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 listen. I'm going to need you. I'm going to need you to go down to hell. I'm going to need you to listen. First thing I'm going to need you, I'm going to need you to get slapped in the face, spit on, feces thrown at you, urine thrown on you. Yeah, that's what happened. When they took the walk, remember, remember when it, after they, after they, when, they, when they put you on the cross, they took the walk? That's what people would do. they throw their feces, they throw their urine, they, pee in, they would pee in cups and they would throw the urine on you as you walk past. What, what movie was that, Sister Leslie? We saw that. No. The other movie, The Girl. It was Game of Thrones. When the girl was um, the queen. They shamed her. That's what they would do. They made her walk naked down, down from the church house to the house, and all the people lined the street, and they was throwing their feces on her. They was throwing, they was throing their stuff on her. Right. That's, that's what Jesus would do. First of all, son, they're gonna, you're going to have to go through that. Okay. Well, 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 then, then, son, look, then you're going to have to let them punch you in the face a hundred times. They're going to pull your beard out. Then they're going to take this crown of thorns. They're going to shove it down into your top of your head and the thorns are going to dig down into your skin. Maybe even, maybe even puncture the skull. Then they're going to put you on this thing they call the whooping post. And it's going to be this big, strong guy who works out. He's going to have this thing called a cat of nine tails that he's going to put glass, sharp glass, and sharp bone in. 
and he gonna stand about 10 feet away from you and he gonna take that thing and he gonna, he gonna throw it till it whoops around, wraps around your body and then he gonna pull it. And when he pull it, it's gonna rip your skin and all your bowels and your bones gonna start to show. Wait, 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 I ain't done yet, sir. Look, 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 look. Then you're gonna have to survive that because you can't die right there. Because now 99% of the men die halfway through the whipping post. But you can't die. You gotta survive that. You're not gonna bleed out either. You're gonna have to get up. They're gonna tie this cross to your back. And as you walk, that's when people gonna start spitting at you and throwing their pee on you and throwing their poop on you and talking about you and hitting you, throwing all kind of rocks at you. That's when they're gonna do that. Then you're gonna have to go up on this cross. They're gonna put you up on this cross and you ain't gonna be able to breathe. Your lung is gonna get filled with, your heart sack gonna get filled with fluid and you're gonna die of a broken heart. Then he gonna come and puncture you. That ain't it, son, that's the physical side of it. The spiritual side of it is you gonna have to die spiritually, which means you gonna have to separate yourself from me. That's when he said, oh God, why have you, that's when he cried out. Now, all that other stuff was easy, but when he said that, that's when he cried out, where you at, where you at? Where are you? Why have you forsaken me? Then you had to go down to hell and deal with that. But I don't know if I'm gonna be able to raise you up. <laughs> you gonna have to go through all that, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to bring you out. Is it a chance you might not make it? Is it it? That's foolishness. That's foolishness. That's, can you imagine God telling that to Jesus and not, and not giving him the guarantee that he's going to come out of it? Can you imagine him giving up all that and there's no guarantee? We have, a, we have this assurance of faith. That's what it is. It's an assurance. God assures us if we do it by faith, it's going to happen. If we do it by faith, it's going to work. Why? Because it's a covenant. It's a covenant word. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. That please word is a word that's used by kings in their conversations when they're talking about what they're willing to do based off what you have to do. When they came into a covenant, it wasn't no, it might happen, might not happen. No, you did this if it caught, if it, you put this on the life of your children. That's how strong this is. That's why God had to send his son. You, that's why Abraham had to offer up Isaac. You put, when you enter into a covenant, you putting this on the life of your children. It's going to happen or somebody dies. So a covenant is an assurance that the price for this thing will be paid. So if I didn't live up, if I didn't live up to my responsibility in a covenant relationship with somebody, the only way that I could fulfill and, and, and the king would be satisfied with me living up, with, satisfied with me keeping the covenant, was I had to go kill my child. So you better be sure I'm going to get it done. Whatever has to happen, this is getting done. That's a, please God, that's, what, that's a covenant term. Without faith, our responsibility, our, our, our end of the covenant promise, the covenant agreement with God is to believe. Is to do it by faith. That's it. Not not go to the nightclub. Not not cuss. Not that ain't that ain't that ain't. That's the byproduct. That's the byproduct. He don't even look at that. That's been what. So just to give you an idea, just to give you an idea. The covenant, the God began to talk about the new covenant back in Jeremiah. He began to talk about that in Jeremiah. What is that at? Look, look, top in new covenant. Somebody type in new covenant. It's in, I think it's Jeremiah 17. Maybe Jeremiah 17. I think it's Jeremiah 17. What is it? In Jeremiah, he began to talk about that in Jeremiah. Is it 17? What kind of, what? What kind of phones y'all got? What kind of app y'all got? It's easy. 
just type in New Covenant. Yeah, Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31, 31. Yeah. Um, listen, let's read this. Jeremiah 31, 31. God, he began to talk to Jeremiah about this New Covenant. Um, he says, let's start at verse 27. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will show, sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man, with the seed of man and with the seed of, of, of beast. And it shall come to pass that like as I have watched over them and plucked up and break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict, so will I watch over them to build and to plant, saith the Lord. In those days they shall say no more, the fathers have eaten and I have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. <laughs> I ain't got time to go into that. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall set up, be set on edge. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day. Listen, listen this is beautiful. That I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. That's for my husbands and our heroic husbands. That's just an example of what a husband you looks like. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, look, I will put my law in their inward parts. That's a reference to new birth. That's a reference to new man. And write in them in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. That word heart there is a reference to the mind. And they shall teach no more man his neighbor, saying, Every man bro brother, saying, know, know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Now let's go to Hebrews. Go to Hebrews. To be Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 8. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 8. Let's start at verse, um, so Hebrews, Paul was writing, in, in chapter 8, he was writing to the Hebrews about Jesus being, the, being in the new priesthood. And, and because of the new priesthood, there was the necessity of a new covenant, a new order. Because every time you establish a new priesthood, they come with a new ordinance, with a new covenant, with a new way. The, all, when you think covenant, think the way God relates to his man, his people. This, how, this, God establishes it when he establishes the covenant, this is how I'm going to relate to you. This is how I'm going to be a God to you. This is how I'm going to be a husband to you. This is how I'm going to love you. This is how I'm going to bless you. When you think about covenant, think this is how God, this is God's mechanism. This is God's mechanism of guaranteeing. This is how I'm going to relate to you in this life. Think about it like that. Man. Like, that should change the way you function. He said this. Look, let's look at verse um, Hebrews chapter 8. Ah, let's just start at verse 1. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the majesty, on, majesty of the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. He's talking about what's happening in the heavens. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have someone also to offer. He's, he offered himself. For if, we were on, if we, for if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed thee in the mount. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, speaking of Jesus, have obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which is established upon better promises. What makes our covenant better is the new creature. That's what makes it better. It's new man. That's what makes it better. That's what separates it. It's, what did we say? The laws written where? In the inward parts. In your mind. New creature. That's what makes our covenant better. I mean, from the start, it's, it's new creature. That's, what's, that's the initiation of making our covenant better is new birth. Okay? And based upon better promises. Now, the better promises is what makes the promises better is not that we get to go to heaven. They had that too. It just was another, they had one more step that they had to deal with. The better promises is look, is look, is look. Deli health, wealth, deliverance, protection, and wholeness 
has been given, I've been given the power to manifest. That's the promise. I have unlimited capacity now to manifest the life God has called me to manifest. The promise that God gave man in the very beginning to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion is, is, is able to be manifested by me again. It's able to be manifested. The promises, right? He, he mentions, no, I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna give you the one promise he mentioned Right? The grace, the goodness, the bless, all that stuff. But 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 the one promise he mentions, make let's make note of that, right? For for if the first covenant had been faultless, then should there no place to be at for a second. For finding fault with them, not with the covenant, but with the people, because they were fallen, he behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not according to the now he's quoting Jeremiah, not not according to the, the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. To lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts. I'm sorry, I will put my laws into their mind and write them upon their hearts. And I will be to them, I will be to them a God. I love it. And they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all will know me from the least to the great. That's, that's, that's the first promise is we all get to know him. That was reserved for the priesthood. The better, one of the better promises is that the whole nation now, every one of us gets to know him intimately. Here's the other one. Here's another. Here's the most important. For I will be merciful to their, to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Of all the promises that's associated with the new covenant, the one he mentions is I will remember I will, I will not be mindful of the unrighteousness and I will not remember their, their sins and their iniquities anymore because that's the root cause of destruction in your life. From the physical to the spiritual to the manifestation. It comes to shipwreck your faith. Condemnation and shame. There's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. It's a covenant. This word please means to, to be enter into this covenant with God. It's a covenant connection that we have that begins with new birth. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. If not, you can be. Look, he said this. The idea of pleasing God, let's, let's, look, at, let's look at Jesus. Uh, Matthew, when Jesus was baptized, the Bible says, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And a voice, then, there was, then came a voice. That voice said, yo, 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 this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, let's go to another level. The, what's associated in the context of this scripture, Sister Leslie, what's associated with God being more pleased to you? The huh? The that's not, that's good, but it's not complete, right? Sonship. Mm -hmm. Sonship, first and foremost, right? That's the beginning. So we see what's, what's, what's associated with God being more pleased with you is sonship. Is sonship. Is identifying as a son of God. You can't identify as a son of God if you don't identify with the capacity to do what my daddy did or do what my daddy does or live how my daddy would have me to live. You have a capacity as a, as a child of God to walk by faith and not by sight. So we'll come by faith and by not by fear. First thing is sonship. Sonship then gives me what? What's the other thing? What verse 16 say? And Jesus was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. Being well pleased means the heavens are open to me. Whatsoever I bind on earth. 
I bind it on earth because I see it's been bound in him. I see into the realm of the spirit. Being well pleased means I have, a, I have an ability to see in the realm of the spirit. And the spirit of God descending upon him like a dove. And was, I walk by the spirit of God. So we see the three things that are associated in this particular verse to, being, to God being well pleased with you. Is sonship, open heaven, and a spirit led life. You, 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 want, you want to experience, you want to hear that declaration of being well pleased? Listen, you got you to gotta walk in, you got you to gotta identify as a son. You got to be led by the spirit. And you got you to speak, you got to have an open heaven. You got to be able to see in the realm of the spirit. Faith gives us sight to see in the spirit. Those are things like that's associated with, with, with being more pleased. So when you walk by faith, when you're walking by faith, you're walking in your sonship, you're walking under an open heaven, and you're being led by the spirit. Let's look at another verse before we get out of here. Um, in, what was it? Ma Matthew 17. I think it's Matthew. Is it, is it, is it Matthew 17? I think it's Matthew 17, right? Jesus took Peter, James, and John upon the mount. He said this. He said, look, look, look. He said, um, um, um. verse 4 says, Then answered Peter. No. When they got up on the mount. Uh, let's look at Matthew. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bring them up to a high mountain. And was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elias talking with him. So Moses, Moses and Elias represents, um, represents the law and the prophets. Right? They represent the law. That, that's what the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the leadership of the day, that's what they were seeing. The five books of Moses and the prophets. That's what they would have seen higher than anything. Right? It says, while he spat, while he spat, no, 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 no. It says, uh, verse 4 says, Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles. One for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. It's almost while Peter was speaking. In other words, God interrupted him. Sister Leslie, God didn't wait, to wait for Peter to finish saying what he had to say. Kayleen, he didn't, he didn't wait for Peter to finish saying what he had to say before he interrupted him, okay? Just so we clear on that. While he yet spat, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice came out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Here's the most important statement. Hear ye him. Moses, Isaiah set him aside. This is the voice right here. So we see, we see, when, 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 when God is well pleased to you, when you walk by faith, there's a voice, there's a language that you use, that you'll speak with. All right, we gotta go. Man. We ain't even halfway done with the scripture. It's so rich with life. He said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's a covenant term. You have a covenant with God. Your responsibility in this covenant in order for you to believe that what you gotta hear, what you gotta do, Sister Leslie, you gotta hear. You gotta hear. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing is actually a byproduct of hearing. I mean, uh, believing is actually the byproduct of hearing. Technically speaking, Sister Leslie, you don't have to try to believe. Man, it's not easy. That's the problem. Most folks are trying to believe God. Just hear him. Woman ain't got to try to get pregnant. Just, 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 just engage. Folks ain't got to try to get pregnant. We trying to get pregnant. How? What, what y'all doing? How you, how you do that? <laughs> trying to get pregnant. No, just, just open up. Just receive. Just hear. 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 You gotta hear it a hundred times. Hear it. It's the by faith is a byproduct. If you're trying to believe, you haven't heard. You haven't heard properly. Listen. 
by the time we get through the series, you're gonna be you're gonna be a faith life master. A faith life. Matter of fact, let's make no. We're gonna have a faith life master class. Living by faith master class. You're gonna be able to hold your master class. Wednesday we'll be back to finish up the scripture. Cause I got some good stuff for you, boy. Cause there's two things you gotta believe now. These things are gonna blow you away. You're beloved. You're blessed. You're destined to prosper. You're more than a conqueror. Lord, confirm the word that these your people have heard. Let signs and wonders be manifested by them. By them. Give them. Give them through your word. The mind to do the miracle. Let it be done by us. Not for us, but by us. In Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll see you.